It's mailbag time. Loads of stuff. Let's get stuck into it. This is definitely going to be interesting. Don't forget to click like and subscribe, just like my desk says. Always follow the desk instructions. And also, thank you much for our Patreon supporters or anyone who supports me the YouTube memberships. If you're interested in supporting the channel, hope you buy things from Mailbag. And go and check those out down below in the links in the description. Ah, these are review items. These are from Banggood. So we have a couple of multimeters. So my plan is to do a little multimeter shootout thing. And I'm going to have a bunch of low-cost multimeters. That's the plan. Get a few different ones. AN808, tiny little thing this is. That's pretty cute. Oh, no batteries in it. <laughs> got one of them. And um, also got this one as well. Whatever brand that is. It's just a smart multimeter. And the idea is I was going to do a, a bunch of comparisons on these multimeters and look at the accuracy using my test gear like I did for the Kowitz KM601 recently. We did a big test on that and checked all the accuracy on that. This is very much like a Kowitz, I think, this one. I think Kowitz do do a version of this. Ah, it's must tool, there we go, must tool. It's got a bit of branding on here, but not on here, but I think Kowitz do one like this as well. So, yes, it's must tool. It's almost like a phone. It's incredible, really. No, the battery isn't either. That's fine. Oh, that's spacing. So, I'll do some accuracy tests using the gear I've got here for doing calibration assessments, I suppose. Yes, yeah, so that's the plan. Just do some comparisons about these meters and see which ones perform the best. Probably the best bang per buck is probably something like that anyway. So if you're interested in that and you're not subscribed yet, then certainly subscribe because you might find a meter which appears to be a good buy. So we should put this to one side for now. Thank you much Banggood for sending me a nice to me. I still want to get into doing the series on diagnostics troubleshooting things and how to you know teach people how to repair things i still want to do that I, I need to sort of get a plan in my head and actually get something underway i know what i want to do i've already made a whole bunch of notes i've got loads of notes about things i want to cover i just haven't progressed any further than that yet so they will be coming I, i'm committed to doing that i just need to get the motivation fully so these are a bunch of 240 volt i've got a text Hold on a so these are a bunch of 250 volt or 240 volt, I'm guessing maybe I don't know. Oh, well, they PTCs anyway. A whole bunch of different values. I did some other ones before which were 32 volt PTCs, only low voltage ones. These are high voltage rating. BCP0 Mexico on the back. And the front says something 250 TF50D. So that's probably a I don't know, 5 amp, 250 volt, I'm guessing. So yes, yeah, so I've got a bunch of these higher voltage ones and other ones. Low voltage are okay for doing like DC stuff and some you know, lower devices. But if you're doing anything higher voltage, you do need a, a higher capacity. So I've got some of those as well. I need mean, to get some 500 watt ones to, to be sure. Uh, 250 is still pretty close to the line voltage around here. So, yeah. Anyway, I'll be links for these down below. Another package from Banggood. What's this? Ah, lower modules. I'm stocking up again the E32 modules from eBite. These are the 20, so these are 100 milliwatt version. Uh, trying to find the front, there we go. Yeah, focus. It's a 433 megahertz T20D. You can just see it there. So these are 433 megahertz versions. Let's get in different versions because I'm running out of available bandwidth on the band I'm currently using because you can only use so much legally, you're not allowed to use too much. It's part of the things for the ISM band, you can only transmit for so long and that sort of stuff. So I'm at the limit of what I can get away with using. So what I'm doing now is looking at different bands so I can spread across different bands and that way I'm not breaking any rules, if you know what I mean. And I'll just cut this one, I wasn't recording, that was dumb anyway. Yes, I've realised before it's too late and I start waffling to myself in the empty room. Because that never happens. Never. Liquid electrical tape. So I only use this one. I'm beginning quite th through quite a bit of it actually recently. Oh boy, I'm using more of it. I saw these ones on AliExpress. So let's give these a go. See if they're any good. Liquid insulating rubber coat, it's called. This one's white. The stuff I normally have is black. So if I get some white stuff, that could be handy too. Sometimes you want, you know, black looks a bit ugly, white will look better. So, yeah. 
I use these for all sorts of things like even bits of weatherproofing and things like that. I'm trying to seal something up when I'm assembling a project. You can put this around, say, screws or switches or things like that, and actually seal the shafts up and that kind of thing. And it has. Use all sorts of stuff. I did it again. I, I, kept, I did the cutty thing without recording. Wow. These are some USB cables. Yep, USB A to B type cables. I think these are five meters or something like that, or different sizes. Oh, look at different sizes here. That's three meters. This one is five meters, and this one is five meters as well. That's better. So these are exactly the ones I wanted for setting my test gear on my bench here. Where I've got USB connections. I've, I did mention this in the last mail bag where I've got this other long cable. 5 meter long cable. That was a USB A to A extension. Ideally though, I can use an A to B, which is what these are, which I'd already ordered at the same time. It just took a week longer to get here. That can go straight through, then I don't have to use any extra cables or doing adaptions. I can just go into the computer, into the bit of test gear, and we're done. So, I know that 5 meters is like the theoretical maximum of USB, so hopefully 5 meters will actually work without being a bit glitchy. 3 meters is too short. I need basically 4 meters minimum. So, yeah, it's, it's one of these things, isn't it? Don't forget to click like and subscribe. It's not a big box yet. I'm not sure what this is. I don't know. Ah, fans. Have you got a fan? Are you a fan? I don't know. <laughs> so what inspired me to look at these is the... HP 3561 DSO was sitting over there because the fan on that is incredibly noisy and I've actually recorded a bunch of footage of me doing stuff for that unit and fixing things which you wouldn't have seen yet I'm going to be probably re releasing another one into this week and I'm not sure when the next one I've already got three basically enough for three videos I've already done one video so it's supposed to be a fairly quiet fan it's supposed to be this is 5 volts there's 24 volts here we go so I did buy a range of different ones so obviously it's different setups on the coils and stuff. I think I've got some 12 volt ones as well. There's probably one of those cardboard in between them to separate them up. So there's 24 volt there. There's this one here, 12 volt, there we go, yeah. So one 5 volt, one 12 volt, uh, two 12 volts I think. And two 24 volts, is that 12? Yes it is. So the question is, how quiet are they? We can test this. So when I say I can test this, I mean I can test this. Literally, with a tester. So what I actually have here is an audio control one third octave RTA which does SPL measurements as well. And here is a SPL mic which is calibrated with the unit. These actually come as a pair when you buy them. And so I can either put on the end of a cable here or I can just plug it straight in the front. I'll probably stick it straight in the front. And um, we'll start, plug it straight in. And we can do an SPL measurement with an RTA to see what the actual spectral noise is from this thing. Wouldn't that be cool? Now the problem is, there is a little bit of noise in this room, it's not completely silent. So we'll turn it on. Now if I turn this all the way down we'll get more sensitivity. We can see the noise in the area a bit more, which is good for testing the fan. But it does mean the SPL will measure 10 dB out, so I just need to make sure that when I do the SPL, I'll put that back to centre. So we'll test it with this. Why not? Okay, I have the 5 volt fan set up. I have the fan positioned exactly 30 centimetres in front of the RTA. I'm going to have it blowing air away from it, so it's not blowing air onto the microphone. I did do it before, but I had it set up wrong, so I'm just doing it again. In case you notice any inconsistencies with those people which notice those details. So. 5 volts, fan facing away from the microphone before it's facing towards it, which is what the inconsistency was. Hide it backwards for some reason. So ambient. Doesn't really hear it. If I turn it sideways. Still doesn't really hear it. If I face it towards it, but not blowing on it. And we'll do the RTA side. Nothing here to speak of. 
doesn't really show up. Let's put it closer and facing away so it's not blowing on it. it doesn't really show up. That's how quiet that one is. Okay, now we're going to do this same test with the 12 volt fan. It's currently running at 5 volts. I can't even hear it. Let's wind this up to 12 volts. It's not really registry much more. Sideways. Face it towards it. Hopefully, without blowing on it. Same deal, pretty quiet. If I turn it around, it's going to blow on it. And it's going to upset the microphone. Okay, that's pretty good. Let's do the uh, RTA section. Move it up closer and not blowing it. Turn the game right up. See something over here. About 180 hertz. Barely. Really quiet, not a big deal. So now we have the 24 volt fan currently running on 12 volts. It is spinning. Let's do an ambient level, turn it off. See 12 volts doing basically nothing. Let's wind this up to 24. Not really really too much. Move it halfway closer. Oops, I just shorted the leads out. That's not good. <laughs> no, too high. It's actually really quiet. So this is actually below the ambient level this thing can pick up, which is good. Lowest level is like 60 dB or something this thing can handle. Yeah, it's like that. And I'll just drop it on the floor. So now turn it sideways, it might be lying on the camera even, I don't know. So sideways, it's in line. It's alright, turn it towards it, but not blowing on it. That's the plan. So it's not that loud. If I move it up like this, put it really close. Yeah, you know. It's fine, let's do the RTA version. See what the actual frequencies are coming out of it. One gain up. Showing a bit more activity down here. Let's bring it closer. So this, this fan is typically the loudest of the lot, but then it is 24 volts and it's running faster. I think this one's got a higher airflow rating. So it's about 250 hertz. Yeah, okay. So all these fans have got hydraulic bearings. If I just like spin them by hand, I can't hear anything at all. There's no rumble, there's nothing. Hydraulic bearings makes them much quieter. So that's what gives these an advantage. If you're looking for fans, go for hydraulic bearings. Unless you've got a, maybe you know reason not to do that. I don't know, but from what I can tell, they're better. So one of these fans will be going in the back of the DSA once I get that thing apart next time. Because this is I need to upgrade because that thing's noisy. In fact actually my my calibrator could use one of these too. That's pretty noisy too. And the last thing don't forget to like and subscribe like this is. Oh no. I'll come back and I'll put it out. Well, we've got a bit further. Oh, 
ordered some riser cards from my DSA for that 3561A from eBay. Same guy I purchased them from before, there have been no problems. For some reason they've arrived in the country nearly three weeks ago now. Haven't moved again. I think New Zealand Post had lost them. It's not the guy's fault, I'm sure he's done all he can to make sure they arrive. But New Zealand Post is a bit crap. They can be anyway, certain aspects of it. They lose stuff. They lose stuff. If it looks interesting, it might go missing. I mean, if you chase it up, suddenly, even though they can't find it when you chase it up, suddenly it reappears. It's interesting. It's almost like someone stashes it to one side somewhere, planning to steal it and grab it later on, once it's been lost. Once it's been declared as lost, they'll, then they'll take it home. It's almost like it's... You know, I'm a piss pessimist. Anyway. Let's have a look at this. Sort of HP instrument. So I'm hoping these riser cars turn up. Because it's not much good for anyone else, are they? You know? Unless you happen to have a uh, HP 3561A, they aren't much good for you. So if you're watching from New Zealand, you're working in New Zealand Post, can you please find out what my packages are? <laughs> anyway. So this is a. Um, this is a, it was a number number, there you go, 350D attenuator set. I'm sure this had knobs on it. Did it? Maybe I didn't notice. There's no knobs on it. Time to investigate. Well, the picture shows this unit, definitely this unit because it's got these labels on it, with the knobs on. Did I take the knobs off while they sent it to me? I did only pay $10 for it, but still, they've taken the knobs off and I'll be claiming that back. Let me check the packaging in case they're still stuffed in there somewhere, maybe they've fallen off. I doubt it. Well, there's no knobs on the packaging, so the boss has took the knobs off. Time to get money back. So this piece of test gear came from a company called Valuetronics on eBay. I'm guessing the fact they've got their own tape on the box means they're probably a fairly large outfit. But Valuetronics sent this to me after removing the knobs. That was very nice of them, wasn't it? They're in Illinois apparently, in the USA, so maybe if you buy stuff from them, tell them to leave the knobs on when they send it. Yes, yeah, not happy about that. Obviously, I was I wouldn't name the company. You've seen what I've received, and the knobs were definitely on the picture. They were there, they've taken them off. So, I'm going to out them because, well, for a start, they have clearly removed the knobs. They don't just fall off, they're not broken, they're not inside the box. I mean, it was well packaged, look at that, give some credit. But, yeah, no knobs. I don't know, maybe you don't want to deal with them. If you work for them, oh dear. But if you know them, maybe, you know, give them some pressure to not rip people off on eBay. That'd be quite nice. Hmm. It's got a label across here which says something. Is that DOA? No, dead fuck, no, I don't know. <laughs> Does it work? It may not even be working. Is there anything in the case? Let's have a look. Nice, let's pull the top cover off to have a look. And, yeah, it's got stuff in it at least. It's not an empty box. <laughs> 600 ohms, 600 ohms. Two attenuated boxes. That's all, isn't it? So we'll actually see if it works, shouldn't we? Hmm. How do I do that? Okay, six hundred ohms on the input. That's looking all right. Output. Six hundred and three ohms. Slightly high, but probably doesn't matter that much of this thing. I don't know. Maybe it does. So unfortunately, I can't turn these because I don't have any knobs. Hmm. Well, it does seem to at least be intact, apart from the fact the knobs have been stolen off by the seller. Yeah, anyway. Hopefully it actually works, so I don't know until I can put some knobs on this thing. But, yeah, it's a real shame to have the knobs go missing. You know, I did pay $10 for this, but it was intact. I paid $10 for an intact unit. Nobody else wanted it. Shipping was about 70 bucks though, so, you know. Shipping was seven times more than the thing I purchased. But, uh, yes. Surprised it's still got the feet on it, I suppose I didn't rip those off and all. Anyway. Annoyed about the knobs. Oh, hope you found it interesting. Click like and subscribe, and I'll catch you next one. Bye. That's not the intake side, That's, that was the wrong way around. That's blowing here that way. Let's record that again, that's shit. Sure.